I always encourage my viewers, especially those staying at all-inclusives, to leave their resort properties and get out there and explore. But unfortunately, not all excursions are created equal. Hi guys, Vanessa here and welcome to my channel. And in today's video, we're getting into all those common excursions that you see at most resorts, especially all-inclusives, that you can either book online, usually right on the resort website, or once you arrive on property. But some of them, in my experience, are not worth your money or valuable time. And I know while you're having a great time at your resort, it's going to take only the best excursions to get you to venture out, right? So in today's video, I'm packing a lot of information in by telling you which excursions you might want to think twice about, which ones I suggest instead, and also giving you all of my best excursion tips along the way. So let's dive right in. So let's begin with one of the most common excursions you'll find, the Dolphin Encounter. And you can book this through pretty much every all-inclusive in the Caribbean and Mexico. And this was actually the first excursion my husband and I did on our honeymoon six plus years ago. And that was a definite once and done for us. But we did learn a lot of valuable things from the experience. First of all, these tours are surprisingly pricey for what you get. You're in the water about 15, 20 minutes. You might directly interact with the dolphin for about 60 seconds and then the rest of the time you're stuck for a few hours in what is essentially a shopping area with a bunch of overpriced merch and souvenirs which you really can't avoid because they set it up so you have to walk through the stores to exit so it starts to feel a little bit like a scam and of course there's the whole morality issue of these animals being held captive so my tip for this one is to beware that excursions like dolphin encounters are offered regardless of destination because they're globally popular and a good cash grab, not because they're a good experience or even authentic to the region, which is why you can find them offered all over the place. So just keep in mind that the primary purpose is entertainment and making money, but that doesn't justify these dolphin tours. One of the biggest places you can find these tours is Punta Cana, but my alternative excursion suggestion is Outback Explorer, which used to be known as Outback Safari. You ride in an open Jeep style vehicle, and instead of spending so much time and money on something that's not local to the region, you get to see and explore many Dominican towns and the lovely countryside and learn all about the local vegetation and agriculture, like cocoa beans and coffee, giving a much more authentic experience and even value for the money. So I know some of you might still love those dolphin tours, but I personally think there are better excursion options out there. Next, we have museum tours. And let me quickly preface this one by saying we love museums. We've lived in some of the biggest cities in the US, and one of the things we loved the most was constant access to some of the best museums in the world. In our dating years, in the beginning of our marriage, all we did was go to museums. So I'm saying all of that to let you know just how much I love them but they're not necessarily the best use of your time and money on vacation, especially in tropical tourist areas. And so my tip for this one is when choosing an excursion for whatever destination you're visiting, try to research what the country or even area is known for, and then decide if it's interesting to you. And if you're going to do a museum tour, do an audio tour on your own rather than a guided tour, which really slows you down so you end up seeing less than if you did it on your own. But for many tourists, the museums just aren't all that interesting in general, and they get disappointed. So instead, try to find tours with natural landscapes like rainforest or coral reef or even major exports so you still get a locally authentic excursion, but one that's much more immersive and for many visitors, more interesting and enjoyable because you're experiencing it firsthand. I know this next one is really going to upset many of you, and this is just my opinion, but one of the most common excursions I don't recommend is the booze cruise. Catamaran sails are wonderful, just getting out and feeling the ocean breeze and taking in all the scenery. Many of them allow you to get in some snorkeling and beach time as well. 
but for many visitors, you probably want to avoid anything labeled party cruise or booze cruise like the plague. And if you do book them because you maybe want to snorkel or see a beautiful sunset over the water, just know that there will be guests around you who over drink because the drinks are included and some may act up or at least get sick somewhere along the way. So if you're just looking for a party, then yeah, it's a good tour to book. Just be careful because those fruity drinks are stronger than you think and the combination of heat, alcohol, and sugar isn't always the best result. And you probably don't want to be suffering from a hangover on the few precious days you have on your vacation. And my tip, which might seem obvious, but you'd be surprised, is not every excursion is a good idea or even fun for every guest. Many of these booze cruises can be found all over Jamaica, Ocho Rios, Montego Bay, even Negril. And my alternative tour suggestion is climbing Dunn's River Falls. And the key when booking is to make sure you pay attention to whether the tour states that you're visiting versus climbing the falls because you want to climb. It's a wonderfully unique experience and one I think you'll enjoy more. But of course, many will still prefer the booze cruise but as always, just make sure you know what you're getting before booking. The next excursion to avoid, more so due to time, is an all-day tour. And right away, I want to be specific and say an all-day tour is good if you're cruising, but not the best idea when staying at a resort. When cruising, you're docked anywhere from 8 to 12 hours usually, and you want a longer tour to see as much of your stop as possible in the small amount of time you have, right? But when staying at a resort, especially an all-inclusive, you want to plan your excursions wisely to maximize all the benefits of your property. So now I'm going to give you one of my absolute best tips and rules of thumb to follow. When staying four or five nights, you should book one excursion for the entirety of your stay. When staying for six or seven nights, book two. Any more than that, and you really won't be able to fully enjoy your all-inclusive. And I'd say the same if you're staying for three nights or less. Don't even bother booking an excursion at all because that's just not enough time to do both and still get your money's worth. And I'll also add the caveat that this is my advice more so if you're staying at an all-inclusive since there are so many on-site amenities included in your stay. If you're staying at an a la carte resort, sometimes you can get bored, not enough to do on site, and you'll want to enjoy more off site excursions. But that ratio of days to activities is a good one to follow so you can have a stress free vacation, striking a good balance between activities and having enough downtime. This next excursion is another one we did on one of our first all inclusive stays, and that's the glass bottom boat tour. And yes, there are some good ones out there, but generally speaking, most of them are very murky and not too impressive. It's hard to see much of anything, at least in our experience, and they end up being kind of boring, to be honest. You'll have a much better experience snorkeling or scuba diving on your own if you want to see things up close. Which brings me to my next tip. If you feel safe, try to explore on your own. And if you don't feel safe on your own, at least book an excursion where you're participating rather than spectating. Glass bottom boat tours are big in Mexico, especially tourist areas like Cancun and Riviera Maya, but this is definitely the place where you want to snorkel on your own. Cancun is home to the second biggest barrier reef in the world, so the snorkeling is amazing. So try to book snorkeling excursions to Coral Reef National Park or especially the Underwater Museum of Art, which is just incredible with hundreds of life-size sculptures to explore. And if you're looking to explore on dry land, you have one of the seven wonders of the world, Chichen Itza nearby. It's honestly the best tourist area for excursion options and doing a run of the mill glass bottom boat tour is a waste when you have so many better things to choose from. So try to get out there and explore all this wonderful area has to offer. 
So as you can see, there are many incredible excursion options available in these big resort areas, and rather than booking the same ones over and over, I hope this video helps inspire you to try new things and explore as much as you can of the surrounding area. Let me know some of your favorite excursions and maybe some that I missed that are your personal faves to give us all ideas for our future travels. This is Vanessa for Passport Pages. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you all very soon. Bye guys.